Right, um, been to Portimao uh, three, four weeks ago now, um, and I'm just going to have a little quick run through a little bit more data. Some interesting little features, well, to me, I find them fascinating. Hopefully, you'll find them interesting. Uh, we're going to look at how dramatic or undramatic um, a slide can be from a visual point of view, that means cameras on the bike, and how it looks in data. And then we're also going to compare uh, visually once again uh, at the same corner, effectively without a slide, and how similar are visually they look, yet when you look at them on data, how well, you can see where time starts to slip away because they're quite a bit different when it comes to uh, uh, data perspective because the data is actually what's happening on the bike. So let's quickly run, have a little flick at, this is the front camera, this is effectively the last corner at Porta Mayo. For those who are familiar, you've just come out of a, a effectively like a long hairpin, short straight, ease back over a rise, drop into a dip. It's a really long, uh, big radius corner, more or less in the bottom of the dip, you, uh, more or less in the bottom of the dip, you get your, your breath back as it were, start to pick the bike up, you're at full lean, and it's kind of how brave you are or how confident you are is to get the throttle on more and more and more as you come into the, the compression at the bottom of the uh, dip and then up onto the start finish straight. So that's kind of what we're going to have a look at here. So this is uh, a lap with a slide in it. Um, it <laughs> didn't look that much, but I tell you, my heart was kind of in my mouth while it was happening. So let's have a look. A little slide like that doesn't look much does it let's have a look what it looks like from the back so this is the slide taken from the rear camera it doesn't look that remarkable but trust me this gets you going a bit and just that black line it kind of leaves behind you see so you see the two images of the bike there um, of the slide one from the, the headstock, which has got the camera mounted on the bike, so you see a little more movement going on because the, basically you're having to counter steer into the slide and then straighten up again, so the camera moves around a little more. Where the camera on the back is fixed, so that just sees the track kind of move around. So again, unremarkable in one sense. But if we have a look at it on the data, now what I've done here on the data screen is I've taken off a lot of the traces uh, which tend to confuse the issue somewhat. Quickly running through what the traces are, this blue line here is uh, the basically what the throttle bodies are doing, or what Marvin, I'm, I've called the ECU now, what Marvin is, does with the throttle. Uh, my twist grip, what's happening there, um, yeah, I've taken that trace off for the moment. You've got the white line here, which is rear wheel speed, the orange trace front wheel speed, and this blue trace at the bottom here is effectively the angle of lean, what the, what, how far the bike is over. So if we bring up the screen with the, the um, values on here, which gives us an idea physically what's going on. As we kind of, this drop off here in the throttle is me coming over the rise and dropping into the dip. There's a short period of time where the throttle's kind of closed and I'm just kind of, met, you know, letting the bike turn. Uh, and as you can see, both front wheel speed and rear wheel speed are pretty much matched at that point because the bike's essentially rolling down the dip. I then start to gather myself together in the bottom of the dip, uh, start to open the throttle and start to build the throttle up. Now, as soon as you start to open the throttle, uh, the front wheel speed starts to flatten out. The rear wheel speed automatically then starts to, uh, starts to slide or starts to spin. And you can see how the two traces, the front wheel, which is the orange, and the white one which is the back wheel they effectively start to part and then round about here there's, a, there's quite a big increase in throttle which is generating more wheel spin and then all of a sudden um, Marvin decides uh, that's a little bit too much and backs the throttle off that's why you go from um, your throttle position set in here which is 56 percent and it drops it to um, oh sorry wrong one it drops it from 48%, it drops it down to 17%. So it's basically chops the throttle right down. And you see, obviously, the rear wheel speed drops off again. And the front wheel has a little dip in speed. The whole bike kind of slows down while it finds its grip. 
But what I thought was, was interesting as much as anything else, I've ticked the, um, the angle of lean, which is bank. And you see the angle of lean here and the bottom of the dip, if you look at the value here, is 54. So the bike's running about 54, 53 degrees of lean. So it's quite well on its side. Then as the, the, the wheel starts to uh, effectively start to spin up, uh, and the, the, this is the start of the slide, the back of the bike starting to move out, all of a sudden the slide really gets away. And if you look at the uh, angle of lean, it goes up from 54 degrees, it kind of drops off fairly significantly down to 57 degrees. So essentially the bike, uh, the back of the bike slides away and it, it sort of effectively starts to low side the bike. You, you feel that kind of sliding out. Then uh, the tyre finds grip. It then sort of basically sits the bike back up again. So you see the, this sharp intake here, or sort of sharp uptake in lean. So it goes from 57 degrees up to 52 degrees. So it's like five degrees of lean, it kind of picks back up and that's the bike effectively straightening up. And you can exaggerate that in a slower corner, uh, with, uh, certainly with a bike without um, traction control. And that's where effectively a high side is. You get the bike kind of starts to low side down as the back of the bike slides out. It then finds grip and punts the bike straight. And of course, straightens itself up very violently and flicks you over the top. The advantage with traveling very fast is the wheels are turning really fast so that centrifugal force helps to slow down the bike sliding out and of course slow down how fast the bike comes back so you end up with long the faster you go you end up with long slides as opposed to short violent slides so that's essentially what kind of happens uh, in the high side situation and then further out of the corner as the confidence come back you can see uh, the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed, this, they're accelerating away as the throttle percentage is increasing, increasing up to, towards 100%. And then something interesting happens, if you look at the rear wheel speed at this point, uh, with the angle of the bike still at 52 degrees, so it's fairly well over on its side, the rear wheel now is, is spinning up really nicely, um, and we're doing... Do 20, 34 kilometers an hour faster the rear wheel than the front wheel is. But what also happens, you'd think that's going to cause uh, another um, shutdown, as it were, by, by Marvin, but he doesn't. Because what what's also happens here is if you look at this line here, let me just move that data values out of the way a second. If you see this blue line here coming up here, What's happening there is the bike effectively is starting to come upright as you start to go up the rise, up the hill onto the start finish straight. As you can see, 40 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees, 19, the bike's really starting to straighten up. And what happens is the wheel speed effectively slows down. Even though the throttle's fully open, uh, the rear wheel speed starts to slow down because A, you're coming onto the sort of, as it were, the taller part of the tyre, uh, or sort of the fatter section, it's a taller profile. Uh, so the wheel kind of slows down and that's why sometimes when you set the bike up it feels like you're losing speed you're not you're accelerating but the engine rpm kind of drops off because the tire gets basically bigger but it's finding more and more grip because instead of the when you're at an angle of lean that you're relying more on the adhesion of the tire to grip and a percentage of gravity pushing the tire down but as the bike comes up that bike all the weight the gravity gets pushed the bike into the floor so effectively you find much more grip so the wheel spins a lot less so it's a combination of the wheel spinning less and the wheel actually slowing down because of this radius uh, increase then you can see this the the what happens here and it, it's very typical of coming onto the start finish straight there's a, a quite a big wheelie point and you can see the orange line which is the front wheel speed drops off fairly radically while the rear wheel speed the white line carries on accelerating now what's happening here is effectively you're coming into a, a wheelie and of course even though my throttle is pinned at that point marvin isn't happy because i've dialed in a percentage of anti-wheelie so marvin winds the throttle back which because it realizes the wheel is starting to lose speed because it knows the wheel is off the floor um, so it kind of 
um, basically shuts the throttle down to, to get the wheel back on the floor. As soon as the wheel hits the floor, it comes back up to speed. And of course, Marvin then realizes both wheels are rotating uh, and then we're on full gas again. So that's kind of briefly what's happening in that slide and going over the rise. But what I'm gonna do now is bring in, um, I'm gonna to have to take off some traces because it'll get rather complicated. So what I've brought in here is another lap. Um, it's actually from a different session where I changed the rear tire. And what I've done here is I brought in another lap. It was a, it was a completely different uh, session because I changed the tire. I went from a cherry tire to a slick. And I was finding with the slick, I was getting more confidence about picking the throttle up that bit earlier, not driving particularly earlier, but sort of coming on the throttle and driving that little bit earlier. So if you, it, again, it's slightly confusing because you've, you've only got two colors to deal with here. So the blue lines, this top one here is the throttle opening, Marvin, and this uh, is rear wheel speed. Where the red line is a different lap, the top red line is the throttle opening again, and the bottom line is the rear wheel speed. So essentially, at this point on the track, which is kind of just as you're dropping into the dip, everything is pretty consistent. We're traveling more or less within a, within a few kilometers an hour of each other. So it's very consistent to that point. But essentially what I've done at this point in the track is I picked the throttle up that little bit earlier and start to open the throttle. It's only a small percentage of throttle opening. If we have a little look at that, a yeah, small percentage of throttle. So we're up to 20% throttle there on the red trace. But straight away, that because that started that red trace to progressively get on a little bit earlier, you can see that the rear wheel speeds, they're fairly well matched up to that point. And then straight away, that the as it were, the faster red line uh, starts to pull away as the blue line is struggling to keep up. It then starts to make up time, as it were, the blue line, as the throttle comes on to match the red line speed. Then you have that slide that we talked about, and you can see the rapid drop off there in uh, rear wheel speed. And of course, the, the rear wheel speed now of the red line is significantly higher. And then the traces are remarkably similar to getting towards the end. But what that, what essentially that looks like in the real world if we have a look at the, the two video images, and I'm, we're gonna start them from a similar point on the track, which is at the end of this yellow curb here. We're doing, what, 116, 17, about 119 mile an hour here. And this is the lap with the slide. And then we go to this lap. Again, we're slightly further out in the track, but we're the same point on the track. I'm actually going slightly slower, doing about, uh, three or two or three miles an hour slower uh, at the same point on the track on the red line, which is the faster um, trace, as it were. Without the slide, if we have a look at the, the, the image, as it were. There's a, a white line that I, I use as I'm crossing here, uh, just before the wheelie point, to be honest and we're doing 149 mile an hour. So we've gone from 116 to 149, and that's without the slide. We're, with the slide, we're doing slightly faster than the red trace. We have that slide, again, looks a little uh, undramatic. We then come up to the white line, but because we've lost that little bit of drive, little bit of inertia, when we get to the white line, we're doing 140, 141. So it's a significant speed loss at the same point on the track, just purely down to that, uh, that slide. Because we've come effectively from a, a, a slower speed to end up at a faster speed without the slide. Now we're best part of, uh, of uh, eight or nine miles an hour down um, at the same point on the track. Now, of course, from here onwards, the bike's absolutely flat out. Um, there's, there's, there's no trickery at that point. And that's extra speed you take down the straight with you. And I can imagine if you were side by side with somebody, there'd be somebody pulling away effectively because they're going faster. And even though you're accelerating, he'll be accelerating as well. 
So that speed, you, that exact that advantage, you take all the way to the end of the straight. And it looks so small, and it certainly feels so small, but is significant in just what's kind of happening there. So what we're going to have a look at now is we're going to have a look at something which I discovered uh, at the end of the straight, because at the end of the uh, start finish straight at Portimao, it's a peculiar braking zone because it's not a level uh, track on the approach to the first corner. You kind of drop into a dip and then you get a bit of compression, then you go around turn one. So it's, it's a really confusing corner to get right. And it, as a result, what you tend to do in the braking zone is you come into the brakes, but you don't go for a maximum brake straight away. You kind of come on a really strong brake because you drop it into the dip. And as you get the compression, you come onto strong brakes then. So it, it's, it's a little uh, misleading sometimes when you look at the data. So let's have a quick look at that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to also put uh, the traces which I like to have on, which are front brake, rear brake. Now rear brake I've actually added to my traces now because this is kind of what I wanted to show you. Uh, on the BM I've got the ABS mode on its second setting, not the lowest setting, which basically turns off all the ABS, turns off the link braking, turns off the ABS to the back brake. Um, I have it on the, the next setting up from that and what was I've always said to everybody I never use the rear braking and I don't use the rear brake but Marvin does and I wanted to show you how that actually looks in real life so that's rear brake front brake let's have a little look at those so end of the straight um, this is your rear wheel speed oh let's bring in front wheel speed because that's quite a handy thing to visualize as well Bear with, bear with. Right, so this is the uh, end of the start finish straight. Um, white trace is uh, rear wheel speed, orange trace is front wheel speed. With these traces here, because anything below this, this uh, blue dotted line here is effectively negative or minus. Um, and what I've done is I've put the brake, because generally speaking, brake is you slowing down. So all the brake happens below the line, all the acceleration and throttle happens above the line. So you can see the throttle here goes from full gas and drops off a cliff because I've got the throttles completely closed. Uh, more or less at the same time, if you look at the red trace here, this is the front brake. So I come into the front brake. And what's interesting is the purple line is the rear brake. Because as I'm dropping into this dip, the, one of the first things that I do is pull it back a gear. And when you've got a blipper on the bike, as you can see by the blue line here, the, the blue line is the percentage of throttle which Marvin kicks a bit of throttle on to help the thing change gear. And exactly at the same time, this purple trace here, which is your rear brake, starts to come on as well. And then the throttle stays closed again, even though it's actually closed by the throttle grip itself, the percentage of throttle is still up at 13%. And it stays at sort of that sort of 13.5%, 13% down to 12. So that it's keeping a little bit of throttle on to help to stop the wheel locking. But also at the same time, the next engine blip, Marvin puts the rear brake on again. And then get down to the last braking point and puts the back brake on again. So you can sort of see there's also little tiny blips in, in the rear wheel speed. Because the rear wheel speed is obviously slowing down because the throttle is closed. As it blips the throttle, you get a little blip in uh, rotation speed. Next little blip, you get a little blip in rear wheel speed. And then another bit of a blip here where you get the last gear change. So the, the ABS, the rear brake, is actually, as it's de probably detecting the wheel picking up sort of too much speed because of the blip, it's actually putting the brake on. That's my interpretation of it, and I'd love some feedback. Um, and then, as you can see, I'm approaching the corner now where the bike starts to sort of, the, the, the track sort of levels out slightly. And of course, the red, this is the red trace, is the front brake. And I go for a strong brake here at the last part of the approach. So we're up to, it's, it's only 10.8 bar. So it's a good strong brake. Uh, and the rear brake is on for a short while and then drops off. As soon as I start to trail the brake off into the corner, we're back to zero back brake. But I just thought it was a really interesting feature to show how under the surface of what I believed was the not, not using the back brake at all, the fact that the, the 
uh, Marvin is picked up after the blip of throttle the rear wheel is rotating and puts the brake on, I assume, to kind of slow the back wheel back down to where it originally was. So how much rear brake, because it's a, it's a significant amount. I mean, at one point, the, the rear, rear brake uh, is up to nine bar, 9.5 bar. So that's a good strong brake from the rear to get the thing, uh, the wheel to kind of slow down. And I thought that was a really interesting feature.